Motherfucker, motherfucker, motherfucker. Why am I not allowed to say motherfucker? This is something that's always bothered me because... <sighs> this is something that's always bothered me, is that people get really upset about you using bad words. And the thing about bad words is that they're not bad. I mean, think about it. What is the reason why you're not allowed to say motherfucker? Cunt stick. Tit wipe. There is no reason. But, but they, they're, they're bad words. They mean bad things. No, 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 they don't. No, they do not. You know how I know that they do not? Uh, it's because uh, there's an alternative for every single bad word that exists. I can't say that that fucking hurt, but I can say that that frickin' hurt. I can't say damn it, but I can say diddly darn it. I can't say shit, but I can say shoot. I can't say cunt, but I can say Bilbo Baggins. Because it's not like people are just gonna stop cussing when pe when there's little kids that, uh, that you tell not to, to say bad words. They pretty much always end up saying one of the alternatives in the same exact way and use case that you would have said one of the original bad words in. If you stub your goddamn toe, you're gonna want to use a fucking interjection. I guess that's the thing that's frustrating is that there are arbitrary decisions that these words became taboo. Okay, let's break it down. Fuck. That can mean a couple things. It can mean sex. It can also mean... Oh my goodness, this thing that just happened is either crazy or painful. It's like a word intensifier sometimes. That's fucking awesome. Oh fuck, look at that elephant. I guess the definition that you could easily have an issue with is the one that means sex. But you're allowed to say sex in a normal situation. Or you can say one of the other words for it, like copulate or... Bibbidi boppity boo. I can't say the John and Mary fuck, but I can say John and Mary shammy whammed. And you still know what I meant. So there's no freaking difference. I think that you can be mad at how people say things though. It's the intention behind the words that makes something either okay or malicious. For example, and don't uh, make a big deal out of this because it wasn't that big of a deal. It didn't happen really that, that often. And uh, there's a lot of people who had it a lot worse. But in middle school, uh, I was called gay a little bit. Um, and uh, at that point, I didn't even really, I mean, in middle school, I feel like people don't really get a full grasp on sexuality and what you're into or whatever. I mean, a lot of my friends hadn't even kissed a girl yet. Everyone was just kind of like neutral. The most important things in middle school for the most part were kickball and the underground black market for mechanical pencils and mechanical pencil lead. So when I was called gay by people, uh, I didn't even really process the idea of what a what gay meant. It was more like an immediate, that's bad because they said it in a bad way. <laughs> you're gay. That's automatically, I don't care what word you're saying right there. I'm offended based off of the tone that you said that. You're good looking and you have nice eyes. I'm offended right now. It wasn't even about the idea of being gay. I am completely supportive of people doing whatever they want to and choosing to live their life and in whatever way that they want to. You should be whatever you want to be. Go, go be it. That should be on a bumper sticker. You should be whatever you want to be. Go be it. Austin Witherspoon. And I guess I was slightly worried about me coming off as like too feminine or whatever and that sort of thing. But for the most part, it was more about the fact that they were just taunting me with this word and I didn't like people taunting me with a word. If instead they had said it like, gay, I, I would immediately been like, hell yeah, I am gay. Thank you for noticing. I don't even care if it's inaccurate. The way that they said that was really awesome and encouraging. You could say, hey, you keep being a Nazi, you. <laughs> and I'm gonna be like, you got it, sir. I hate Jews. Because it, it's so freaking encouraging when you say something like that. And it, uh, things only usually get bad when you say it in a bad tone. I guess then the problem comes down to more of a basic, uh, you should be angry at people when they're mean, and you shouldn't be angry with people when they're not mean. So it makes sense if you get angry at someone from saying, you motherfucker. And that makes sense, because it's so, like, aggressive and, and mean and everything, and I don't like it. But you shouldn't get mad at somebody from saying, you motherfucker. Because that's awesome. And you're awesome if you say that. Because that's awesome, and you feel awesome when someone says that to you. Because it's awesome. 
Awesome. That's pretty much the basics on what I think about cursing. I and, and keep in mind, I don't really curse that much, actually. It's kind of weird that I have this, such a strong opinion on something that I don't really get involved with. But, uh, I mean, I, I, do, I, think I, I think I modify the language that I use uh, based on the people that I'm talking to. So I'm talking to a bunch of people that are cursing a lot, then I'm going to curse. If I'm talking to a bunch of teachers, then fuck that. Academic language is the shit. Now, keep in mind, it's always even better if you combine both worlds. For example... The meteoric fall of the Tyrant was fucking awesome to watch. Wasn't that awesome? That was awesome. So to recap, if you weren't paying attention, motherfucker, bitch, dick, cunt, asshole, douchebag. I feel like I'm missing words, but you get the point. And future grandchildren, um, I, th do not take this as me giving you permission to cuss in front of your parents. Uh, because although they are my children, um... Once they have you guys, I'm not really in control of them anymore, and definitely not in control of you. Uh, I think that if they do not want you to cuss, then you should listen to your parents, because they know what's best for you, and they're trying to give you the best life that's possible. All I'm saying is you should ignore them and fucking cuss. And disclaimer, I'm kind of talking like in a perfect world. I mean, I understand that it is taboo to cuss, and... Um, a lot of the times it can negatively affect you in situations if you cuss and you're not supposed to. And although I really hate that society has such a taboo on arbitrary words that don't really mean anything, you should still listen to those rules because those rules are how society works and while it's unfortunate, you can't do shit to stop it. All I'm saying is that I don't think you should be all uptight when somebody else cusses because it doesn't really matter. You should be uptight when someone's mean. It's a much easier way to live. Don't have like, am I allowed to say this word? Can I say nigger? Can I say cunt? Can I say asshole? I don't know. Your rule for whether or not you should get mad at somebody for saying a word was, was the sentence that they used that word in a mean sentence? If so, you're allowed to be mad at them. It actually makes life a lot easier and there's not as many things to keep track of. So, yeah. Anyway, grandchildren, that's it for today. Um, also, uh, honorary grandchildren of the present. If you're watching this right now, uh, not many people do, but if you're watching this right now and you have any questions you want to ask me on behalf of my grandchildren because they're not alive yet and they can't really ask me questions about what's happening and the stories that I tell, if I need to clarify something or if you just are curious about something that you would want to know about your grandfather when they were 19, um, go ahead and ask me those questions in the comments. You can also email me at waywardadventurer at gmail.com. The comments are probably easier if you're watching this right now because it's literally right below the video and yeah also and i'm not really obsessed with the whole like subscribery thing or getting a big following on the internet for doing this because really i don't give a shit about any of you that are watching this right now this is more for my grandchildren uh in the future they're all that matters and you don't matter i'm telling you that whoever's watching this right now you don't matter except except for these people who i know might be watching this that I technically have to say matter or else they get mad at me. But also YouTube keeps sending me emails about how to grow my audience and apparently the proper way of doing things is, is to invite you to subscribe to my channel because it's fun and stuff. It isn't. But I have to tell you that so I'm just gonna bear with me while I lie to you. You should subscribe to this channel because it's so much fun and I update the videos every single week. It's a video journal series where I document my life and record my stories for my future grandchildren that aren't actually alive yet. And believe me, I am one crazy motherfucker. Sometimes when my headache's bad enough, I'll take three ibuprofen. And that's too many. Are you ready to hear stories about adventures like that in video form? You should hit the subscribe button and watch more of these videos and also comment on what you think about everything that I've just said. If you don't know about the YouTube comment section, it's one of the most exciting and well-educated places to go have a calm and rational discussion about anything that you want to talk about. So you should go down there and talk about stuff. It's always fun. That's it. Like I said, because I'm a creator on YouTube, YouTube keeps sending me emails about how I should try to promote my channel and encourage interaction amongst my audience. Really? I don't care. But I'd figure I'd give it a try and see if it would work. Anyway, uh, that's it, grandchildren. Uh, if you're watching this in the future, uh, and you see me anytime soon, uh, we should make pancakes. Actually, no, you should make pancakes for me. Like, I'll watch you make pancakes, but I'm all old and shaky, and I'm probably not going to do good at pancake making. So uh, I'll sit there and encourage you guys while you make pancakes, and then you can feed them to me. That's how being a grandparent works. I've earned it at that point by still being alive.
People should make me pancakes for free. And I get to watch them. Yeah, so let's do that. Doesn't that sound fun? It sounds fun. Let's do it. See you guys soon. <laughs>